Hey guys, it's Mark. Welcome to Speed Shooter. Today I've got an asset which should be part of Unity's Inspector. This has a bunch of small, amazing tweaks that can make your user experience of the Inspector even better. To sum it up for you, you can create little bookmarks for game objects that you use, you can copy and paste components really easily, you can save in play mode, you can drag components out which you often use, you can give components animations when you open and close the drawer, it's even got resettable variables so if you set and script a specific value, you can always go back even if you change it and it's got various shortcuts to making components open and close really nicely and it has a bunch of attributes like buttons, foldouts, tabs, variants and showing hiding variables along with many others. I will be giving one copy away to one lucky person down below if you comment down below and tell me which of the features is your favourite and I'll pick one person randomly to win a free code. So you can find V Inspector 2 on the Unity Asset Store, it's 50% off for the summer sale and I've already bought it and we can open up in Unity. I can just download and import this in. I think there's something really nice about this asset. Now if I go to tools and I go to V Inspector, we could enable all of the features separately so you don't have to have any of the features enabled by default. So I'll go through them separately so you can see them being used. So we've got the navigation bar and that gets added to the top of the inspector. Now if I open up and I've got lots of different objects here, I'll never open up my lighting. So I've now got, I can drag the directional light on here. I can drag the FPS controller. I've added a few different objects up here. You can see that I've got the FPS controller, which I can jump to, the directional light, I've got the volumes, I've got the visual effects, and I've got the cherry prefab. You can edit these icons with the V hierarchy plugin that this developer has, and you can use these arrows to cycle back between the assets that you've just clicked on, like a back and forward function in many different apps. We go back to tools and then we go on the copy and paste component. Now, when we see here, you can see these components that are added to this object, this first plus controller, and I want to be able to take these to another object. So I can click on the little icon here, which has the little tick when I've clicked on it. And you can see that it has the components copied. Now, if I go back to my new object, I can paste three new components to a different object that I have. So I can paste them directly there. And this is one of the most annoying things that Unity doesn't have by default. And while you're learning about this, be sure to check out all the links down below because Unity Summer Sale is now on for massive savings. And do be sure to check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects. Then we'll go back and I'll choose save in play mode. So I've got this box collider here. On this object, I'm just going to hit play. I'm just going to set the Y value to 5. And then I'm just going to click to save this little save icon. And I'll hit the save. And then when we exit, you can see that it defaults to 5. So it remembers exactly what we just saved. Now we can enable something called component windows. And I really like this because before we couldn't drag out components. But if we hold alt and we just alt and left click, we can drag out components that we might want to use all of the time. So we can still be doing everything we wanted in the editor and we might be using a few things, but I wanted to just adjust on that object on the fly whilst looking at another object. And I find that really, really useful as well. Another tool is component animations. So if I try and put these side by side, this is how it looks by default. It's just very snappy. It goes back in instantly when I click it and straight out. But you can see the difference with animations. It's got more of an ease in and ease out. So it makes it look a little bit smoother, which is just a quality of life feature. Then I said we had a minimal mode. So if you look on the right hand side, you'll see the icons. And when I enable minimal mode, it takes away the arrows when they're not relevant and any of the items on this side. So you only see them when you hover over the different items in the inspector. And we've got three here, one that can hide the script field. And as you can see, I can hide it. We can hide the help button and we can hide the presets button if you wish to have those hidden. A really handy feature is to be able to have resetting variables. Now, if you can see inside this script, I've got the ideal transition time, which I've just set to six. Now, if I go back to the script and I edit the number that's in here and I've set this and I didn't really like it in the inspector, maybe I want to go back to the default. We've got a little X in the corner. We can press this and we go back to the default value, which makes it a lot easier to be able to customize and control what you have in your script. I'm going to show you a bunch of shortcuts which can make enabling, disabling and using your components much easier. We might have a bunch of components open. To close them all, we just want to hover over one of the components and press Control, Shift and E and it will close all of the tabs all together. And then you can actually just press E when you're highlighting over one component to open and close that component depending on how big it is so you can open that without ever clicking. You could delete a component by hovering over one and hitting X. 
you could toggle active by hovering over a component and hitting A. And we're going to look at a bunch of the attributes too. And remember, you can look at the tools here and you can open the manual or join the Discord if you need any help. And you can also disable the inspector if you don't want to use it. And just to note, if you do go to the manual, it does have all the features. It has all the shortcuts and the different attributes that you can actually use. So what I've done is I've created a really simple script so you'll be able to just see some things here. Now we need to use the using the inspector as the namespace to be able to access some of these attributes that we might want to use. First of all, you can set a button around any method that you do actually use to be able to create a button of that sort of sort for the inspector. So if I wrap the square brackets and write button, you now have a button which is the same as the actual method name. You can actually give the button a specific name if you write that in brackets and quotes and you can give it a name of your own button you can see here that i've now got two buttons one with the name of the method and one with the actual custom name and you can even make customizations to the button so we can set the size equal to 50 and then the color can equal red in this case and i've just given it another method name of the big red button so now you can see the button you can set the specify the size and the color to make this really stand out if you wanted to customize the inspector. And one of the best ones that I could ever find, which should be in Unity by default, is the foldout attribute. And then you can give this your own name. So you can now see we can easily fold this out rather than having to write our own custom inspector to make this happen. And it makes life so much easier. And then you can actually use end foldout to end that section if you don't want other things to be folded out at the same time, like the player dialogue there. So you can make sure it's unencapsulated with the fields that you want to use. You can even use things like sub foldouts to be able to create nested foldout groups. You can use buttons inside foldouts too, if you want to use those too. And there's another one I really quite like is the tab. So you can create a tab and then give it a name, use end tab and then another one and end the tab. And then within the inspector, You've got an option to be able to cycle through the different tabs and you can have this as many different tabs as you want. And I think this is really nice to organize your inspector to. Then we might have a field which is normally hidden in the inspector, but we can use something called showing an inspector. So you'll be able to see this directly in the inspector as you want to use it. And I've got a bunch of variables here. Now you can actually show and hide depending on other variables or other things that you might want to test. So if we create our own boolean, I'll call this hidden bool and set that equal to false by default. And then we can say in brackets, and in square brackets, we can actually say hide if that our hidden bool is true. So you can see the hidden bool here. If we set this to true, you can see that it hides the rest of the fields that we don't want to use. And you can also do the difference where you can say show if, so you can show them if this is true. Another way to do it, instead of being able to show it or hide it, you can just use disable or enable if so whichever is apparent it will disable those so they're still visible in the inspector but you can hide so they're not actually accessible and editable quite similar to showing and hiding different things you can use read only for specific fields so then you can actually have them disabled and they'll only be shown and you can't actually edit them Another one you can use is something called variance, which you can create variance selectors and you can set some settings of whatever you want these values to be. Just like with the variant here where this one's a string, this one's an integer, and you can set string names or you can set values of whatever the field would be. So then you can see we've got a nice little drop down. So then we can make sure that we set whatever that variable should be at any time. And you can use the different variable types to make that happen. And then we even have something which we can specify, say, a variable, which is level. And then we can use the on value changed so we can almost subscribe to event that when this changes, it can run the method which is associated and be able to change that accordingly. And you can check every single one of these out in their documentation because it's really clear and easy to use. So remember, if you want a really awesome little selection of features to add and improve your Unity Editor experience, it's 50% off at the moment. And if you do have any questions about this asset, be sure to comment down below or send the developer a message and I'll leave all the links so you don't miss out. I'm giving away a code for this asset 
to one lucky viewer if you comment down below which is your favorite feature and i'll pick one at random so thanks so much for checking this out do be sure to check out all the links down below because unity summer sale is now on and you can make some massive savings so and do check out my patreon to get over 225 different scripts assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else big thank you to pete steiner and very shooter for the amazing support and thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video so don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers